Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about my 2024 ins and outs. Now, I feel as though I'm a little bit late to this trend as it's been primarily showing up on short form content on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is, but I thought it would be fun to kind of sit down, do a little chit chat video, grab a drink, grab a snack, and we can talk about our ins and outs for 2024. Also, I have the window open. It's a little bit warmer out today on the East Coast. I'm trying to get some fresh air, so if you hear any noise, I have my window open, sorry, you're gonna have to deal today. I thought it would be fun to kind of share this info with you guys. It's a little mixture of a couple different topics. I've thrown in a few different fashion ones. I've thrown in mostly self-development ones and maybe a few other things in there as well. But all in all, I thought it'd be fun maybe to give you guys some inspo for some things that you're going to be kind of keeping in, bringing in for your 2024 and kind of leaving back in 2023. Let's get right into it. Let's start off on a high note, a light one, and we'll do a little bit more of a fashion overall kind of vibe that I'm going for, and that is minimal put together outfits over slouchy, comfy clothes. Now, the reason I say this is because the way, and I feel like I've brought this up before as well, the way that you dress kind of is the way that you present yourself and how you feel. So I've taken it upon myself that even if I am leaving my house to do the most mundane thing, whether it's literally just running out to the grocery store really quickly, or I'm just running to go get some coffee, or I'm just going to Target for more things that I don't need, I'm making it a point to actually wear something that I feel good in and not just kind of throw on leggings or throw on sweatpants and a sweatshirt or whatever it is. I'm making it more of a point to kind of put together an outfit, even if it's super casual or whatever, to actually make sure that I feel good about myself because not only does it show who I am as a person while I'm out, but it also gives me a lot more confidence and feel good and feel better about myself, which therefore will then lead me to make better decisions. It's a lot more of a subconscious thing, whereas I kind of put together where if I'm wearing something that is a little bit less put together, super comfy, super casual, slouchy, just kind of whatever, I'm not really gonna make the best decisions because I'm not really feeling good. Not that they're bad decisions, but I could be making better ones that are better for my future self as well. It's almost kind of like a trick on your mind, like a little bit of a psychology thing. So hopefully you guys are kind of picking up, picking up what I'm putting down. So I kind of am trying really hard to be present and intentional with what it is that I'm wearing when I leave my house for this year. Next, we have skincare over makeup. Now, I have been recently experimenting with makeup, having a little bit more fun, but just because I say skincare over makeup does not mean leaving makeup out as a whole, but more so in the fact of investing more into skincare to help me feel better physically so that makeup can be fun and not something that I'm using to try and cover up what's going on on my face. I really have been loving trying out new skincare things, really learning more about skincare, what works, what doesn't work, the order of what you're supposed to do, and really paying attention because sometimes at night I do get lazy and tired and I just wanna crawl to bed and not do anything, but I've really made it a point to make sure that I get my nighttime skincare routine in. In the morning, I've been doing eye patches every morning, like things like that, because that also makes me feel good. And I feel as though if women nowadays actually looked in the mirror and was like, wow, I look great without anything on, anything further is just going to enhance your natural beauty. And that's the point that I'm kind, kind of trying to get across here is that, for me, I want makeup to be more fun and enhancing than something that is needed because I just don't feel confident. So I'm investing more time and money into skincare and focusing on that so that makeup can be more fun for me. Kind of going with that, I have trying new things over staying in my comfort zone. I feel as though right now I'm kind of in a gray area phase of my life, kind of getting myself out there to do different things while I have the time, while I'm young, while I have the chance to do all of these things. I really want to make a point to whether it's 
just going out by myself and doing like a little solo date or trying something new, trying a new food, trying new skincare, trying new makeup, trying new things, even if it's the smallest little things, to, because it really leads to bigger decisions where if I force myself to do smaller things that make me uncomfortable, then that gets really easy so that I'll make myself do a little slightly bigger things that are more uncomfortable and then bigger and bigger and bigger and then huge decisions that I would never expect myself my former self to do before so I'm really trying to focus on getting out of my comfort zone and trying new things another small thing that I put on my little list is natural nails over loud excessive nails I feel as though when I had acrylics it was great and amazing because I felt put together all the time and they were super super cute it took away from who I was trying to be and it almost was too much of a focal point for me and looking back it's not really the aesthetic and the vibe that I'm going for for myself my personal aesthetic kind of with the investing in skincare over makeup I really want it to be something that is natural but still fun so it's kind of just enhancing my natural self so right now I do have my nails done but I don't have acrylics they're pretty simple I've gone for just a cute little Valentine's Day thing it was really kind of taking away from who I was and I kind of want to stray away from it and I want to maybe focus on growing out my natural nails so that I have more natural beauty and self-confidence another little small detail small thing that I want to implement in 2024 is lemon water slash tea first thing in the morning over coffee first thing in the morning now you guys know I love my coffee I absolutely adore it I live off of it I'm basically Lorelai Gilmore and I absolutely love coffee that's why I literally created an entire coffee corner in my kitchen but for health reasons and trying to be a little bit more aware of what I'm putting in my body. Obviously, caffeine slash coffee first thing in the morning is really not good for you and not good for your stomach or your gut or anything like that. So I really try to make it a point to start with maybe green tea in the morning or peppermint tea or hot lemon water, something like that instead of going straight for coffee. Going along with things in the morning, I really want to make it a point to getting up early over sleeping in. Now this is so, so difficult for me. I want to be a morning person so, so bad, but I genuinely always wake up super, super sleepy. I never really ever wake up and feel refreshed so i am trying to take other steps than just forcing myself to get up early so whether that's doing my rumble boxing class in the morning and making myself wake up a little bit early so that i have something to look forward to or something to do in the morning that makes me want to wake up so i'm taking it in small steps because i know myself and if i try and jump too big the habit will not stick and it won't be a lasting habit. It'll kind of just be short term and I don't want that. Over the course of the last six months, I used to wake up at like 10.30, 11, 11.30 maybe. And now I get up at 8, 8.30, maybe 9 the latest. So I've definitely improved. So I just want to kind of force myself to that brink, that like 7.30 brink that just in my brain it hurts to say but I know it's better. Even if that means I don't really have anything to do, but if I get my day started earlier and I start the day off right, then the rest of my day will be 10 times more productive. With that, I also wrote down celebrating small wins over downplaying achievements. Kind of like I just said, I never used to wake up at 8 a.m. I would, oh, I would never be up before 10 unless I had class or something I had to go to. So waking up at eight o'clock as a normal for me right now is a really big win for me, even though it may not be for other people. Even though I'm doing a lot of work, most of the things I'm doing are sitting at my desk, whether that's editing a video or I'm sitting here filming or I'm editing a reel on my phone. It does tend to feel unproductive when you look back at it. But I've noticed that it helps where if I write down obviously everything that I have to do for that day, which I normally do anyway, as I go and I check it off, I make it a point to look back at the end of the day and be like, wow, even though it kind of felt like an unproductive day because I really didn't go anywhere, I look back and I was like, wow, I was super productive. I really did do a lot. And it makes me go to bed feeling a, a lot better and a lot more 
motivated to do more stuff the next day as well. Sorry about that guys. I was rambling and talking for so much that my battery basically died. But moving on, let's hit a few slightly deeper topics without rambling on too much. Let's jump right back in and I have self-development over self-doubt. I feel like this is very up front doesn't really need much explaining as it kind of just goes with everything that I had said previously. Basically, it's one of those things where you have to come to realize that mistakes are here for a reason and it, having the self-doubt about something, I'd rather try something and fail at it and make a mistake and learn from it than doubt myself so much to the point where I don't even try. So with that and self-development, it's one of those things where it's a trial and error. You kind of have to figure out what works for you and what doesn't. And trust me, there will be a lot of errors and a lot of trials, but it's even more rewarding when you do find the things that work much better for you and help develop for yourself than just sticking with the self-doubt and worrying that it's not going to work out or I'm never going to figure it out or it won't work or whatever it is. So I've decided that self-development and learning from my mistakes is way much better than having any self-doubt. Continuing with the same topic, I put self-discipline over motivation. Now, as we all know, motivation will run out. You will not have motivation all the time every day or especially when you need it, but self-discipline will always be there. And if you learn to have self-discipline, that also goes hand in hand with self-respect and trust within yourself. So even though I may not feel like going to the gym or I'm extremely tired and laid out, I'm gonna go because I made a promise to myself that I'm gonna go every day, whether that is just going for a 30 minute walk or I'm going to the gym and I'm lifting weights or maybe I'm going on the treadmill at the gym, whatever it is, you have to have that discipline within yourself to just go and do it because you have to also remember that you're gonna feel 10 times better once you finish doing it. So self-discipline over motivation all day, every day, all of 2024 because we are not here to just let ourselves get by and not do the things we need to get done. Next we have, I actually saw another girl write this and I thought it was so good and it went really, really well with the topics that I already have. And that is self-confidence over comparing yourself to someone on a screen. Now we all know, but sometimes we just need a reminder that things online and on social media are not real. They are not real so you have to realize that even though this person looks absolutely gorgeous and they look like they're so happy and they're having the best time of their life and they've got it all and they have it all put together that is a tiny little fragment of a snapshot of their life and you have absolutely no idea what was going through their head while they were even taking the picture and just trusting yourself that if you like the video even if it's not what someone else or what other people are doing you have to understand that everything on a screen is not real and you have to just do what makes you feel good and makes you feel confident. That is a perfect segue into my next one which is being yourself over eras. Now that has been the newest thing and I've used it so many times myself explaining the clean girl era, the soft girl era, all of these things but instead going into 2024 I've decided that I'm no longer gonna have eras. What the look, what my look is or what I'm going for or what I'm feeling like wearing right now. And instead just decide that I am going to pick and choose what I like and decide whether or not it suits me. And when I do find the things that suit me and I feel confident, that is what I'm going to keep and everything else can stay out there. So if we want, for example, I definitely coincide and relate with the clean girl era, specifically the simplicity and the natural beauty aspect of it but i also definitely relate with the mob wife era because i'm definitely someone who likes a little bit more dark aspects darker aesthetic something that's a little bit more boss woman i feel like or what is that like dark feminine energy i love that about that as well so you can pick and choose what you want to take from these eras but you don't have to be so caught up in it and be exactly like that because they're just fads. They're gonna come and they're gonna go and that's it. So if you constantly are going with what other people are doing, you're never gonna realize what you actually like and 
what's your actual aesthetic. I will do my last little deeper topic one before ending it on a lighter note. We have acceptance over holding a grudge. I've definitely realized getting older, you have to take forgive but not forget very, very literally, no matter who it is in your life. You have to accept that what they did or who they are is the way that they are, but you don't have to deal with it or let them project it onto you. That what they did or who they are is the way that they are, but you don't have to deal with it or let them project it onto you. Very different things. So you are allowed to accept what they've done, but that is for your own well-being, your own mental well-being and your own emotional well-being so that you don't keep holding on this grudge and gaining all this resentment. It's not cute. It's not pretty. It's not at all what I want to have within myself. You have to just accept what it is and move on that doesn't mean they have to stay in your life that doesn't mean you have to talk to them or whatever the situation is it doesn't even have to be a person it could be a random encounter encounter from five years ago where i overthink it and i was like oh my gosh that was so embarrassing oh my god why did i say that accept it and move on because i bet you that person that was there that you thought was embarrassing in that situation probably just remember what it was that happened or could care less they've moved on with their lives they don't care so just accept and move on because we don't have the time to be thinking about things and holding on to our past. Next, we have reading slash journaling over screen time. Now, trust me, I know it's a lot easier said than done, but it's one of those things where you just have to remind yourself the aftermath of what you decide to do. So if I woke up like this morning and I didn't go on my phone right away, I let myself kind of just lay in bed, relax, take a minute to get myself to wake up naturally. But about after 15 minutes can then allow myself to go on it. But usually I have a strict rule now where I just go on Pinterest. I can't go on Instagram. I can't go on a social media platform like that because I know that if I start my day scrolling through Instagram, I'm going to be stuck on my phone for the rest of the day. So it's baby steps, you guys. Starting off your day, at least don't go on your phone for 20 minutes after you wake up at least set that as the baseline okay you can do anything else you can get up and go do your skincare routine maybe you leave a book on your nightside table or next to you and you open that up to start reading or maybe you're journaling you wake up and you journal right in the morning or you put on some music create a good environment to wake up to so that you enjoy doing something and you aren't immediately like oh my god i need to go on my phone i need to check what other people doing i need to check my notifications because this morning that's what i did and i hated it because it took me so long to get ready set up and i'm a lot more agitated it goes to show for everything so you just have to remember oh i really want to go on my phone but i know i shouldn't let me grab something else because you're gonna feel 10 times better doing that instead of going on your phone finally last but not least that is eating whole foods over takeout you guys we have to remember that food is nutrition okay and that you have to eat things that are better for you so that you can feel better and you can work better and you can think better everything matters that you put into your mouth okay whole foods will make you feel so much better on the inside and take away all the cloudiness of everything. Trust me, I get it. It's you will it will never be perfect, but the least you could do is have an 80/20 ratio of your food. You are allowed to have a little sweet treat at night. I do that all the time. I never want to restrict myself, but being more intentional about the foods that I'm eating is very important, and I've really been trying to hone in on eating whole foods not frozen food or preservative foods or anything like that but whole foods at least first thing in the morning if you start your day out with a good breakfast whether that's at 10 a.m or you you wait and you don't eat that early it could be 8 a.m 10 a.m 12 whatever it is that first meal that goes into should set the standard for the rest of the day because if i wake up the first thing i eat is pancakes bacon waffles, drown it in maple syrup. I'm gonna make bad food decisions for the rest of the day. But if I wake up like this morning and I have my homemade protein breakfast sandwiches that are at least 20 grams of protein, it's yummy, it's satisfying, it's so good. And I feel good about it because I know that I've started my day off with good food. I'm gonna make better decisions for the rest of the day for what it is that I'm, that I'm going to be putting into my body. 
All right, you guys, that is all 15 of my 2024 ins and outs. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. I know that I'm a little late to the trend, but I have been seeing some girls talking about their in and outs for 2024 on podcasts or when they upload their podcast to YouTube and stuff. And I just thought it was such a great idea because you really get to explain and show yourself of what it is that those ins and outs are compared to just seeing it on a screen and be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh, I like that one. It doesn't work because then you don't really set, you don't apply it to yourself. So hopefully you guys have gotten some inspo for some in and outs for your 2024 and maybe you wrote some down and you're going to really actually apply it to yourself because they will never it will never be perfect for everyone. These are just the ones that I'm doing. So hopefully you guys got some inspiration and you can take what you want and leave what you don't. But if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up so that I know. Let me know down below one of your ins and outs for 2024. I would love, love, love to know what it is you guys are leaving in 2023 and what you are bringing into 2024. But I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in next week's video. Bye.